one sent or messenger over 77 times it's mentioned and uh, especially in the writings of Luke and Paul it talks about uh, one who is being sent and a vast majority of these incidents are uh, some of them are false apostles that the apostle Paul would identify as a person who is unqualified and yet talking, right? Or he's talking and his message is flawed in some measure. So Peter opens up his epistle and in verse number one of 1 Peter chapter one, he said, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, and he says, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And he began, you know, to identify himself as God's uh, mouthpiece, uh, one who was sent and equipped with uh, a message. You know, and I'm, I'm a little uh, in bewilderment about who we accept today as God's messengers. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm a little uh, despondent. I haven't uh, responded to any social media, even though I have personal thoughts. I try not to be the police in uh, social media. You know, I got to straighten everybody out, you know. But I have opinion, and I have thoughts in my mind about, and sometimes I feel I should say something sometimes, but uh, you know, when you're in the public square, it doesn't all together sometimes equate out the, you know, the heart of what you're talking about. But it should be in a setting like this where the people of God is built up, be, you know, um, and I'm not trying to castigate against one of the R&B, uh, without me mentioning his name, uh, who has become a phenomenon in the uh, gospel industry. Uh, there is a, a line of brevity that a person who carries the gospel must understand what lies within it. Amen? Amen. Uh, suffering and uh, hate and love, because if you carry the gospel, people will love you at uh, one moment, and if God gives you what to say, and then the next moment, they won't like you. Uh, but what God does, he equips the preacher and the teacher of God, and like Paul would say, the truth, come on, somebody help me finish that. Speak the truth in love. Do it in love. You know, you can tell when a person is talking from a place where they're bleeding at or they're hurting at because it bleeds out uh, in their conversation. And it's hard to talk to somebody who's going through a divorce about how to stay together. You know, when they're, if they're going through a bitter time, it's hard to get a pleasantry about, you know, even sometimes in uh, the uh, LGBT community, a lot of them and, uh, are that way because of a bad relationship, right? Uh, a man can treat a woman real bad, and she comes to a point where I don't want to have nothing else to do with a man. I'm just going to find a good woman. You know, that's just not the way to look at life. Amen. Because there are some things that's going to make us feel bad sometime in life, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the, not the way God wants us to uh, look at it. All right, so uh, the scripture describes uh, one who is qualified to come to us because God sends them to us, right? All right, so we're going to be moving around in a few scriptures today, so I hope you got your Bible ready. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 3. 
book of Hebrews chapter number three. I think uh, we want to rest there for just a moment. Hebrews three and verse number one. You have that? Amen. All right, let's read Hebrews three and one. Therefore, holy brother, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Paul is saying this is the Father's apostle. Jesus has his apostles, but the Father has his. Jesus is the Father's apostle that was sent into the world. That's God's apostle. This is the Father's apostle that's being sent into the world, not only with a message, uh, so now we can consider John 3.16, for God so what? He loved the world that he or sent his begotten son into the world. That if you believe upon him, you should not perish, and you'll have what? Because if you believe in the one he sent, now it's different than the 12 apostles, that you, you're not supposed to believe in them, but you're supposed to believe the words that they say. Right? And their words are supposed to be, supposed to be equipped with the knowledge of the one who they serve. And we have followed this through as we start going to more uh, scriptures to try, try to add a foundation to that. So when God sends his apostle into the world, not only does Jesus have the title of apostle, but he also have high priest, right? Yeah. And literally he is the last high priest that would, that the, this world would ever know. There's no more high priest coming. According to history, there was somewhat, uh, I think around 70 or 71, maybe as high as 72, high priests since the days of Aaron in the wilderness when there uh, was appointed the first high priest of the Levitical priesthood. So uh, Jesus is the Father's high priest. And not only that, we must be careful to understand that this is not what we call an ontological look. But unless we are not careful to understand uh, uh, this, it's not really like a subordinate uh, that God sent his son, but this is like a function because they share in the same deity, they share in the same uh, 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 function as being in deity with the same things. All right? So then. Uh, you have uh, this ideal that God, let's, let's go to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Because what God is doing now, God is equipping uh, the church and those detractors who would try to move you away from the knowledge of Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus, the wisdom of Jesus, and who he chose. Because remember in Luke, I think it was chapter 6 or 7, he talks about how that one day that Jesus went into the mountain to pray, I think it's in chapter 7, I think it is, and he talks about how he went up there and he prayed all night. And when he was done praying, uh, he came down and he chose his 12 apostles. Right? And he named them all. And so... Uh, it's unique now that, listen to what God is saying in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 11 and verse 46. Let's read that. And he says, Woe to you also lawyers, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burden with one of your fingers. You know, they were trying to make people keep the law. And keeping the law was hard. It was meant to be hard. It was meant to be difficult. You can't miss. You can't miss the Sabbath. You can't say, oh, I didn't know the day was the, I didn't know this was the seventh day. I forgot. No, you can die. You know, you out there mowing the lawn and it's the Sabbath, you know. You know, 
know, whatever you were doing. You know, everything was supposed to stop. You were supposed to go home and chill out. But it, you know, so you had to be in tune. So um, these detractors, these lawyers, verse number 47, he says this, woe unto you, for you blind, for you build tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. See, you, you've been killing God's messengers a long time. They did not like them because these men carry the wisdom and the knowledge and the voice or the words of God. Verse 48. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your father, for they indeed kill them, and you blind, you build their tombs. You, 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 you still support me. The ideal of your fathers, they didn't like them, and to show that you didn't like them, uh, here's what you're doing. But verse number 49 is very enriching. Look what it says. Therefore the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles. Isn't that rich? You should have to underline it or highlight it somewhere in your Bible that God says, therefore the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles and some of them they will kill and persecute. That's what, you know, not a long line in line for being, you know, a man of God because it's, it's, it could be, it could have a level, a level of uh, trepidation, a level of danger, in other words, that can come along with the message because at some point it's probably going to get worse than it is getting better for the church. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for, you know, worse? Because the ideal is that, remember in, in Matthew chapter 24, chapter 23, 24, and 25, uh, Jesus talks about uh, there you're going to hear wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, mother against daughter, daughter against the mother, sons against the father, father against the son. And he said, and the end is not, is not yet, it's not happening yet, but you should be able to see the signs. And you can see it every day. All you do is turn on the news. They were killed. So the idea here is that God is sending his messenger. Peter is saying in, in, in his writing in chapter number one of the book of 1 Peter that I am an apostle. I'm one of those ones that Jesus was talking about. And how many know they killed Peter? He was the one crucified upside down. He's going to be Killed for the sake of his message. Remember John the Apostle uh, in his later day uh, under the uh, emperor ruler, uh, uh, was that Dalmatian? And when John began to prophesy, he took John and he sent him away from the city to an out on a called Patmos. Send him away. We don't want your message here. We don't want your message. You know, uh, I, I feel like my message, if I start typing it on Facebook, uh, it, it's going to go crooked. Because, all, you know, honestly, it's talking about this uh, R&B star. You know, no, you, you can't come in and, and, and just be pastor and you just got saved. So, you know, so to speak. You can't come in and get a quick thing and be like, all right, give me my Bible. I'm going to stand before the people. No. God says to the church, no, he's a novice. Go somewhere and sit down and learn something. Be disciple. Be built. Study the word. Get the word. And God says, I'm the one calls anyway. You can't choose to do what you want to do. You're going to have it with me. You can't just decide, I'm getting up here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching today. Sit down, Doc. Let me hold this. No, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm not here because I'm, and listen, I don't mind doing this, but I honor my pastor. And, and uh, listen, I need you to stand in today, and I thank God for him. Amen? Amen. We, we bless him today. Amen? Amen. May God give him rest and peace. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. But I'm not here because, oh, he ain't going to be there? Let me know not there. No, no, stay in your 
faith? Amen. 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 Stay humble. Amen. Stay prepared. Amen. You know, be ready to, you know, to do what God has called. Amen. You feel that God has called upon your life. And it should come out in many areas of life, not just with talking. Should see this in other areas of life. Amen. All right. So uh, then there's a sense. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter eight. I believe is what I want here. Second Corinthians eight. Apostles, 
Just remember what John the Revelator says in his epistle in uh, 1 John. Let's just go there. Just, just as a point of reference, uh, 1 John chapter number 1. 1 John chapter number 1. And verse number 1. Like Bishop, I love to hear those pages turn. All right, 1 John 1 and 1, what does that say? He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Everybody didn't get a chance to hear Jesus in his uh, personal uh, uh, teachings uh, to the apostles. Because they had time away from the crowd when Jesus began to minister to them. Amen? He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. And that was talking about Jesus Christ. Because in order to be an apostle, according to Acts chapter number one, you must have been an eyewitness of Jesus' baptism. His earthly ministry, his death, his burial, and the resurrection. And if you don't have some of those qualities, you are disqualified for being an apostle of the Lamb. Just because you got a message and you feel like you got a calling on your life and you started nine or ten churches all over the land and then in the international realm, uh, don't mean you're an apostle. That doesn't mean that. There got to be some type of reverence that God um, uh, and, and his Jesus Christ, Paul said, I, my calling and my apostleship is from the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. If you go to any of Paul's writings, I see your hand, any of Paul's writings, and you go to the first opening of any of his writings, he can tell you where his apostleship is from. He shares it with everyone of his left. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Um, you're talking about apostle, which means one who is sent. One who is sent. Because remember when they were sitting at dinner one day and they wanted to know at the end of John's writing 
you know, what was going to happen to Peter because John always laid upon Jesus' breast. Now, don't let your mind get twisted here, brothers and sisters. <laughs> but that man knew who Jesus was. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. This man knew who Jesus was, and he, he always a runner, and man, right there. Peter was an outspoken one, but John was the lover. He was called the beloved. And if there was anything intimate to know about what was getting ready to happen, they said John would know. And they said, John, what, what, what's, what, what's going to happen next? What, what's getting ready to happen? John, hey, 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 John. Because G, when Jesus started talking, John was already there. Right? So you have to uh, understand those who had intimate knowledge Remember when Jesus was speaking parables and, the, and some of the apostles didn't get it? When they got along with Jesus, they would say, hey, what did you mean by that? Right? You find that out in the book of Mark, chapter number four. You know, hey, what did you mean by that? And Jesus uh, let this go public, especially with the, the sword and the seed. And he says, uh, John, chapter number four, I think around verse 10 or 11, it talks about... Uh, if you don't understand this parable of the sower and the seed, you won't understand nothing I'm getting ready to say. So brothers and sisters, let that be a warning to us to grasp the understanding of the sower and the seed. That whole narrative of the sower and the seed and, he, and where he went and what he did and who got and who didn't get it. If you don't understand that, you ain't going to understand nothing at all Jesus would ever talk about again. So Peter is one of God's main spokesmen. He, God uses in him. And in verse, let's go back to Peter, chapter 1. Amen. <laughs> Pray, ask God. 
to God as a cry baby all the time. Oh, God. Sometimes you didn't even come to God. God, I just want to praise you today. I just want you to know I love you. Yes. God knows you're going through, and when he hears his child say, God, I love you, in spite of everything, I just give you glory. I just lift my hands and thank God, I didn't come to ask for nothing. I just want to say thank you for being thank my you. God. Thank you. Can I have a witness? Amen. Amen, because sometimes God wants to know how you're going to react when your circumstances change. Count it all, Joy. Count it, Joy. And say, you, 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 you know, I'll be happy when you go through. <laughs> the record show ain't nobody right there. It's hard. But God says, listen, there's a reason for all of this. There's a reason. So Peter's trying to help his listeners deal with uh, God of their difficulty. Did you catch that? Peter wanted his writers and his, his, his listeners to know, or the readers of his epistle to know, that you have a God of difficult circumstances. How do you know the devil cannot really just run up on you and do what he, he wants? God has to give him permission. Anybody believe that? He couldn't just go down there and do what he wanted to do with Job. And let me make this uh, point. I was talking to the pastor not too long ago about it. And I said, I said, well, I said, wouldn't it have been fair if God would have told Job, Doc, you about to go through. <laughs> Man, you about to lose your family, all your riches, your, all your houses, everything is about to just go, go to the wind. God didn't tell Job nothing. Job woke up one morning <laughs> and his life changed yeah. for a number of years. Right? God didn't say, hey, 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 God, man, hang on in there. Be of good courage. I, I'm going to look on you. I'm going to look on you after a while. No, God didn't say nothing. He talked with the devil. Now, you consider my servant Job. He said, no, I ain't got to hit that body. Get to it. He said, well, as of today. Mm. You know. So don't, don't trip when God allows things to happen. And don't think you being picked out to be picked on because you are, because God wants to know some things about He wants you to know some things about you and Him. That He's a covenant keeping God. I, I can I can I can hold you through a traumatizing situation. And I expect you to come out. Like Peter go. Amen? Amen. So here's what Peter said. According to his great mercy, he's caused us to be born again into a living hope. When you got saved, he just not be, he, in other words, that's bad nigga. Uh, he didn't just deliver you from sin. You were born again, but you were born again into a living hope. You were born again with a hope. A hope of what? We're going to find out. Which is, uh, uh, it's interesting because Jonathan Edwards made a statement. He said, you contribute nothing to your salvation but, the, but sin that makes it necessary. Only thing you need to do to qualify for salvation is be a sinner. And you were born that way. That's all you have to do to say, I need Jesus, is be born. Is that profound? As sweet as my little brown baby is, the moment she was born, she needed Jesus. <laughs> the moment she took her first breath, she needed Jesus. Amen. First, she needed Jesus to live, to get her next breath. My father used to always tease with us at the house. He said, you know, God only gave you one breath, boy. Man, you're like, man, I've been breathing all these years. Talk about one breath. He said, you think I'm lying? <clears throat> Take a breath and hold it. <laughs> See, don't you get enough? If you don't inhale and exhale, mm -hmm. if you don't keep on, if you take your one breath, that's the only one you got. Ooh, is that deep? <laughs> <laughs> but it did it in a comical way, you know. It's, that's just hard to explain, but it was just funny. Take a good breath and hold it and see, don't you get enough? All right. But the, what, what God is doing in verse number 
for. He is saying there's two, an inheritance, here's what we're hoping for, an inheritance that's what? Incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away. And where is it reserved? In heaven. For who? For you. For you. Is there a place where you can't even mess it up at? Because <laughs> sometimes we just squander some blessings, right? Amen. People squander inheritance all the time. Mm -hmm. If you think of why on cable they got this show called uh, something about the lottery and how people have taken $37 million and blew it in 30 days. Back in the poll house, back in the lottery line, do it all over again. Next, put your number in. But God says what I have is greater than the lottery. I know sometimes you get tempted when they're on the news talking about the, uh, 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 the lottery is up to a three quarters of a billion dollars. And I know some of us. And they say, yo. What you would do if you was the win. Yeah. And listen, I know I'm in your kitchen. I'm just going to talk for a minute like right this. And y'all ain't going to look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to bless the church every yeah, time. And then you tell us where you're going to leave. You don't ask God whether you should leave or not. You can, you're just making your decision. And since you're making your decision, God says, hold up. And you know, we used to sing that song when we used to split the church back in my childhood. Always remember Jesus, Jesus, always keep him on your mind. And that's what we should have every day. Always remember Jesus. Always. You know, God, what is your purpose for me? You know, there were saints in the Bible who did not want to experience deliverance on this side. They chose to suffer. Find that in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. Right? In the Hall of Faith. They chose to go through. They chose to die by martyrdom, by carrying the gospel. Amen? Amen. So the ideal here is that Peter goes into greater detail when he's regarding the Christian's future hope that God promises his people. Uh, remember in the Old Testament, when they came out of Egypt, God promised them something, right? What, was, what did God promise them when they came out of Egypt? Land. Land. A possession, an inheritance. And what was the inheritance all about? It was already prepared before you arrived. When you get there, houses are going to be there, right? Fruit. The land flowing with milk and honey, houses already built, all you gotta do is what? Possess it. Possess it. Drive out the enemy, trust me, and possess the land. We got a better cover. Amen. <laughs> we don't have to fight for it when we get there. <laughs> He's trying. 
his reader to understand in greater detail that God has obligated himself to afford his new covenant people something greater. As Peter emphasizes this in his second writing, let's go to 2 Peter chapter number 3 and verse 13. Let's see what that says right there. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 13. What does that say in your Bible? Nevertheless, Nevertheless according to his promise, look for what? New heaven, new earth, which the where the righteous dwell. That's the hope of the Christian. That's our future hope. And I promise you, you know, when, when John the Revelator writes this in John chapter 14 and verse number one, anybody know that by heart? John 14 and 1, you can cheat. You can turn there and read. Let not your heart be troubled. Trouble. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, many mansions for dwelling places. For where I am, there you may be also. And I'm going away to prepare this place. I'm preparing it. And you're going to be amazed what God is, what Jesus is doing for you in particular. How many of different levels of reward and glory? <laughs> I asked this question one time. I said, if you knew that the reward was better for hard workers in the church, would you try harder <laughs> to get one? <laughs> yes, try hard. Work hard. Do something. Don't just sit in the church and miss out on eternity blessings that could be afforded you. Ask God to stir you up. God, just stir up the gift that's in you. Whatever you got for me to do in Zion, God, I mean, wake me up until I'm stirred on the inside. Can I have a witness in here? Amen. Amen. Because there, there, there is. It's not just making it in. And so many of us are kind of uh, mind boggled about, I just want to make it in. Matter of fact, church, I just want to be the doorkeeper. May I tell you that that position is already taken? <laughs> Jesus said, I am the door. And I keep the door. <laughs> Nobody gets in unless I let them in. So you can't be the doorkeeper because that's Jesus' job. Right. You can't keep the door because Jesus says, I am the door. And you can't go to be in heaven talking, I just want to sweep the floor. No, get all the way in. Do something. Can I have a witness? Amen. All right. So this promise also has a physical aspect and it is a better scope than anything Israel could have imagined. Now, how many of you all honestly would have loved to experience what Israel experienced going into the land of Canaan? Your riches are already there, land for with milk and honey, your house, every, everything is already paid for. All you gotta do is go. And it's greater. You know, I was talking, the other day, and I was telling a friend, I said, let me tell you something, Doc. I can't wait to, I can't wait to the end of time. When John in Revelation says, and God is going to uh, get rid of all, and he said, and there will be no more seas. No more seas. Do you know how much water is in the earth today? It's really about 75, a greater percentage of water than it is in dry land. It's that much water. And John says, there's going to come a day when God says, and God just want to wipe send all the water away. Thanks for, thank you. You're free to go. And he's going to tell the sun, the moon, and all the stars, and all the constellations. He, the Bible said, and he's going to wipe it away like a curtain. Why is God doing that? Anybody know? Making all things new. Right? He's going to make things new for us. It's, since the world begins, it's going to be a whole lot of folk. God making room. He's making room. His inheritance and God, and, and getting rid of all those stars and the moon and, and the sun, 
So one, you won't need it. Why? I can't hear nobody. I'm, me and my daddy going to be the light. And this is why we sing that song over in Zion. Jesus is the light. He's the light of the world. But pretty soon they're going to see his light. And it's going to shine like the noonday sun. And I just want to be there. Amen? Amen. I, I, listen, church, I want to be there. Man, my time is moving fast. So, the Apostle Peter begins to explain to this end that what hope is built upon. Because Israel's possession, there came a certain amount of overlap between the imperishable and the undefined. Because pretty soon, they got kicked out. They sinned, they messed up, they got thrown out the land. Right now, in Jerusalem, on the Holy Mount, lies the Golden Rock, the Muslim Holy Temple, on the exact spot where they built Solomon's Temple, the most sacred place in the world, is a Muslim temple, church, an idolatrous temple. But God said, don't worry, I'm going to shake it out. Mm. I'm going to shake that whole temple down. I'm going to run these knuckleheads out of town. Just give me a little time. Just wait on me. Listen, God's going to restore order in this earth again. Amen. And I have witness. God's going to restore order. And this is why God doesn't leave it up to you to, you know what God does is in the book of Philippians, I don't have time to go there, I don't want to get too far off more track. He talks about uh, how he guards us. And he, you know, he kind of walks around us and keeps us. But then he does one better. He says, instead of me having to walk around and guard and keep you, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something of myself. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. Mm. That he'll keep you. Amen? Amen. But you still have a responsibility. You know what the Bible says you got to do? You got to guard your heart. You got to, that's your responsibility. Amen? Amen. You got to guard your heart. God's not going to, listen, God said his holy word. And when you put your word, his word in your heart, thy word have I that I may not what? Sin against you. You got to have the parameters to help you. Because one, you're not keeping yourself. God says, keep your heart. I'll keep you, you keep your heart. <laughs> All right? Let's, let's, let's run to Jude just for a second. This is one of the great companions of Peter, the book of Jude. Oh my. <clears throat> and I love this passage right here in Jude. I'm going to hit that one too, Reverend Joe. I'm looking for that passage that said, keep yourself in the love of God. Yes, yeah, verse 21. All right, let's start at verse number 20, would you? Jude tw uh, 21. What does that say in your Bible? But you, but you, but, see, but you, this is this something for you to do. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 21. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for his mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and some having compassion, making a distinction, but others saying with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment of the 
God. Hallelujah. Here I am, God. Not my mother, not my brother, not my sister, not my daddy, but it's me, oh God. Standing. And by the help, Paul says, I, he wants everybody to know that today I stand here. All right, God. Because God kept me. Yes. God kept me. I would have been gave up, but it was God that kept me. Yeah. Yeah. I had a long, I mean, a long gave up and had to been for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. So now unto him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Now, right there, every time I read that, I, I'm saying something bubble on the inside of me. Something bubble. Because I, he's able to keep. He's able to keep you. And then he says, listen, and he closes out this, uh, this letter. To God I see who alone is wise because I don't know how he does it. I don't know how God keeps me holy when in this flesh it's something else. Aren't you glad that it's up to God? Amen. And your responsibility again is to keep yourself in the love of God. That's where you keep yourself, right? Now I went to him, then he said in verse 25, to God I say, who alone is wise, the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. That's rich. Amen. God said, I'll keep you. I'll keep you. You just keep yourself in the love of God. And he himself will keep you. He himself. And all you got to do is just look for the mercy. Look for the deliverance. Mm -hmm. You know, you're expecting, to, God expects you to grow in him, right? Yes, yes. God never expects you to stay as a old home. Woe is me, I'm just over here in Zion. I'm just over here, y'all pray for me, saints. And I'll be the child God is called for. No, God called you to grow. God's called you to know more about him. Do you know when you get to heaven, God is going to, part of your judgment is how much you know about God. <laughs> you ain't going to be able to stand up and tell us something. Well, I know John 316. <laughs> you got to know that God is a keeper. You got to know that he, you got a hope in him. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Any questions on something said to help you? Bless you. Amen. I study here in Peter. I didn't halfway touch the first two pages of my notes. I got 40 of them. <laughs> Amen. All right. God bless you. Any questions? Amen. God bless you. Listen, remember our pastor and prayer that God will keep blessing him. Amen. 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 First lady, we thank God for them. Amen. All right. Let us all stand.